it's seven miniature jet engines and there's a fuel tank in the back. There's uh, some batteries that are allowed to start up and then once you're running, you've basically got a very limited amount of controls. You don't need much. The human is the flight control center. These are your actuators, your arms. You squeeze the trigger onto full power and you just move your arms around and it's all vector thrust, that's how you fly. So, the most surreal feeling is the first time when you're learning that you go into a hover because it's the first time you've ever jumped up and not come down again. That's pretty amazing. But when you're flying now, once you've got the hang of it, it really is as simple as riding a bike. It's not a very glamorous analogy, but you don't think like move your arms, steer the wheel and then any of that stuff. You just think, I want to go over there and you just end up over there somehow. It becomes totally subconscious. So you're basically leaning on spongy pillows of air. That's what it feels like. In the Lake Districts back in the UK, we've done some trials with paramedics where you can scale an entire mountain in what would normally take an hour and a half to hike, you could fly up in about three and a half minutes. We've also got the world record for speed. It's a bit of a niche speed world record. It's the fastest speed in a jet engine powered, body controlled flying suit. It's a long name. But we did that at 86 miles an hour a couple of years ago while we were doing some wing testing. So you really can push the speed and we could go a lot faster, but it's just the safety thing. We're not interested in pushing it. We're not, we're not daredevils, we're engineers.